Welcome Strategy Battle Games to another Gibbet Show YouTube video. You're here with your host Gibbet Show Damien and this is my hobby vlog number 47. Um, this is my first proper hobby vlog back of the new year where um, hopefully you saw the last one where I was talking about the plans I had for the year and this one is the first time where I'm going to be um, talking through uh, some of the stuff I've actually done and I think um, I've had a relatively productive start to the year so um, there should be a fair few bits to show you hopefully some cool stuff. So um, before I jump into that I want to start by um, uh, showing you some of the stuff that my dear lady wife got me for Christmas. So she got me a few stocking fillers from Foreground and they were the Mordenberg Well what was that one? The Mordenberg Signposts and the Mordenberg uh, Crates, uh, Packing Crates. Um, these are obviously uh, Foreground's awesome range of uh, buildings which I think are very Lord of the Ringsy, very uh, either Bree or Lake Towny, and you've probably seen um, those buildings in use in various kind of bat wraps. We tend to dress the 50 point bat wraps with them a lot. In fact, you might have even seen some of these bits if you watched the last episode of the Palantir because we did a uh, uh, fight over them. But um, yeah, I got these for Christmas, which is awesome, nice little um, few little bonus bits, and I put those together and I'm going to show them to you now. Okay, so we'll start with a little signpost, which are um, really, really simple. Um, very, very simple to um, assemble, very, very cheap. You just get a little round base piece here, um, a strut, and then you get all these little um, loose bits that you um, you stick on. There's no there's no names on these for anything, but um, you could always paint someone if you want. I, I haven't at the moment. But they're just nice little uh, line of sight blockers and give the uh, give the board a bit more character when you're um, if you're playing over their Mordenberg terrain. Which is quite nice. I got four of them. Um, also got loads of boxes, which are very cool. Uh, which are these guys? So these are the um, packing crates. The the product is called uh, shipping crates and freight boxes. So we've got these little things, which look absolutely awesome. I think. Mm -hmm. There's loads of just different different kind of kinds of boxes, and this is all um, it comes painted. I know this this isn't particularly um, pretty looking because it's all it's all brown, but um, all the Mordenberg stuff comes um, comes painted and ready to go. Just need a bit of PVA glue to kind of put it all together. I think it's absolutely great. It's really really good range of, um, of scenery, very Lord of the Ringsy, and would highly recommend it. As you see, you get all this inside this one um, box. You get 12 boxes, all of different shapes and sizes, which are really cool. Okay. Um, these obviously um, look uh, very, very easy to assemble, and um, and they are in many ways, but um, they're probably slightly harder to um, assemble or more time consuming to assemble, I should say, than you might think, because they actually um, they come in 12 different pieces. So if we use this one as an example, and hopefully see it as a kind of raised bit around every edge which gives it this nice 3D texture and inside that um, is a box so you have to assemble a box if you imagine there's one two three four sides five six that you have to assemble to make the box that's inside this and then you put six pieces around the edge of it as well so each box has 12 different pieces that have to kind of um, be put together and arranged as you can see let's bring them over here they make these kind of quite cool little and we've got here little piles of you could stack these up however however you so wish. Put that on there, something like that. And so on and so forth. Um to make little um line of sight blockers again, um bits of uh cover if you're playing in and around a town or something. And you've got enough here, you could always get more obviously, but you've got enough here to make little um you know, just have to make one giant pile of boxes, obviously. You very quickly easily make um like four different ones that sit around the table, so they're really, really cool. Uh, these kits are all pretty cheap, I think. Um, they're they're all under under ten pounds certainly, and that's why I stuck them on the list. Um, I appear to have a cart over here. Don't know why that is, but you've seen that before. Assembled that years ago. <laughs> and finally, the last piece I got was this, which is really cool, which is the well. So this is the slightly more um, complicated a bit, but um, by Mordenberg standards, it's very very um, easy. What's really cool about this, as you can see, it's circular. Um, so they've had to, uh, this this bit in here, you have to kind of bend around. It's very, very thin. I, I, I think it's card, actually, the, the bit that makes the well. And um, there's two different circular bits that kind of go together. It's a bit frustrating to assemble this one, if I'm brutally honest, um, trying to hold everything together in the right place. But um, I got there in the end, and it's got a nice touch, which is a kind of piece of string that you kind of wrap around here and, and drop down into the well. Um, 
on reflection I've put it in the wrong place as you can hopefully see where it is where that should I think that should be going right down the middle and I should have put the string over here but I've glued it on there and I don't think anyone will care but um, nice little kit from um, from foreground to um, add another little cool piece of uh, interest to the Mordenburg town so I've got quite a cool little um, Mordenburg town now I've got um, seven buildings assembled I've got another one, um, another building to do, and I've also got the watchtower. Um, so if I get around to doing the watchtower, that'll make a nice centerpiece. I don't actually have the pub um, at the moment. <laughs> um, I don't particularly intend to buy it. I don't have a spare 125 quid lying around, but who knows what the future might bring. But some just some cool little scenery pieces there um, for our games of SPG. So who knows? Um, you can look out for um, these various bits and bobs, uh, dressing various any bat reps that take place in um, at my place uh, going forwards so there we go I kind of um, that's what I started doing that was the first bit of hobbying I did um, of the new year and what I'm now going to show you is um, a bunch of models I'm working on starting with Alfred who you've seen and then looking at some Gundabad Berserkers so this is what I've started um, working on in my um uh, hobby vlog time uh, this year. So I'm going to start off with a completed model that you've already seen, which is this guy, Alfred Lickspittle. Now I'm not going to dwell too much on him because I did this um, the in-depth kind of hobby vlog um, about how I did him, which is the unboxing. So if you're interested in seeing more of this guy, go and check out the um, Alfred Lickspittle unboxing hobby vlog thing. Um, so I'm not going to talk through his colour scheme because I went through it in quite some detail in that video. But what I did want to show you this on, um, I use these um, hobby vlogs to track my progress and to kind of go back over what I've what I've achieved each year. So I wanted to make sure that Alfred made an appearance um, so that when I'm looking back at the end of this year, um, he will uh, turn up. But absolutely lovely, lovely model. I um, really enjoyed painting him, very happy with how he turned out and um, would highly recommend getting your hands on this. So yeah, there's another uh, unboxing video of him where you can see how the kind of colour scheme I used on that uh, if you want. So there we go. That was the first model of 2017 I painted. So only, um, what is it, 37 to go before I've um, beaten 2016's painting. And this is uh, what I'm working on next, the Gundabad Berserkers, as a lot of people are. And at this point I have base coated and shaded them. So. I didn't. I didn't actually um, get a chance to really. I, I, well, I said I suppose I had a chance, but I just didn't um, show you them before they were base coated. Um, but I've assembled them. I haven't done any conversions on these. I thought with six, um, they were there was enough variation. So what I basically did, if we compare these two, um, I went just with the the options available in the kit, which are uh, the two head swaps and a different weapon. So one's got an axe and one's got a sword to add a bit of variety um, into that one. Uh, this one is a sort of, the head is part of the body so you can't really change anything out of that without any detailed conversion work but I changed the weapon again so that one's got an axe and one's got a sword. And over here, um, this is the other one with the changeable head. So I, they've, the model's got different heads and one's got the two-handed axe and one's just got a normal um, axe just to give a bit of variety. So yeah, no conversions here like I did on my Gundabads. Um, they're a little harder to convert straight off the bat, I think, um, because they're they don't have the kind of they have kind of fur going over their arms and stuff, and they're in very dynamic positions. Matt Davis um, of Generation Shift has already done some amazing conversions, as as is his want. So if you do want to get a bit of variation, go and check out his um, YouTube channel for that. Um, but I figured with only having six, I was happy to just use the variety of the pack. If I do end up getting another six somewhere down the line then I might well go and try and do a few more conversions to add a bit of variety, but I was happy enough um, with these guys. But they are absolutely gorgeous models. Really, really, really lovely. And as I was saying, they have been base coated and shaded at the moment. So um, my colour scheme for these, um, fairly simple. Just show you these two before I run through the paints. And there's the last guy. That model in particular, I think, just looks that is straight out of the film, isn't it? Absolutely straight out of the film, just before he's going to kill Thorin. So, my paint scheme for this was the fur and the kind of um, underclothes were done with Rhinox Hide. The uh, straps were done with Gawthor uh, Brown. The leather was done with Doombull Brown for Old uh, The skin was done with Rakal Flesh. 
the um, arm. I'm doing exactly the same way I did my Gundabad, so I use Mithril Silver, which is now um, Reikland Steel, I think. And then the fur, the hair, sorry, was done with Eschen Grey. And then I shaded the whole model with Agro Self Shade, except the skin, which I shaded with um, Reikland Flesh Shade. So there we go. And I think they turned out pretty cool. Um, the heads are amazing. They've got so much kind of detail and like, anger in them, which is really, really, really cool. This guy in particular is fast becoming this pose with either head, to be honest, is fast becoming one of my favourite models in the Hobbit range. Um, I've decided to go for the. I think this stuff's meant to be leather rather than meant to be um, metal. I think on their chests. Um, I've gone with that anyway. Um, there seems to be a bit of variation going on in um, different people's uh, models, but if you look at the detail on the face there, they are absolutely stunning. Gorgeous, gorgeous models. Now, I really can't wait to hopefully do a good job on the uh, on the highlights on their skin there. Bring this guy's face up as well. Really, really nice stuff. Very, very cool to get some uh, a bit of variety in the um, Azog's Legion troops. There you go, and the last one. So, um, at this stage, I've done all the messy stuff. I've um, I've you know used the big brushes to put the uh, base coats on and I've chucked the wash over them. So um, if you're following my Gundabad um, blogs, you know that the next stage is to add them to my um, bases. And my bases are, in a very Blue Peter moment, ready. Ta da! So if you were following my um, uh, Gun Project Gundabad blogs uh, last August and September, you'll remember that my whole Gundabad army is on these um, uh, Matt Davis Generation Shift Forgotten Dungeon bases. And so over Christmas, in preparation for these guys, I painted up um, another six, and you should see that in the middle of it there is a pin. You just see that pin sticking out there, and there's a pin on each one because these have already been kind of lined up and um, selected for each Gundabad, um, which is a fairly time-consuming process in advance because you've got to kind of carefully figure out which one. And obviously, the other thing you then have to do—I suppose you don't have to—but I have is to um, take photos of them so that you know which one goes with which. So I've done that. Um, if you want to um, know how I did the bases, um, they're exactly the same as my old ones, so there's a hobby vlog back around the sort of hobby vlog 42, somewhere around that, I think. Um, we'll explain how I did my bases. So there we are, another six of those. So I'm really kind of quite proud of myself in a way for um, doing over Christmas, because now I've got to this stage and I um, the bases are already done, which is uh, a bit of a... Bit of a saving grace. So I'm now going to um, cut these off their existing bases and glue them onto this um, base. If you didn't follow my other vlogs, the reason I do this now is that there's inevitably going to be some touching up required. I, I, I need to dry brush on these bases and paint them really carefully, so I want to paint them separately to um, having the models on them, if that makes sense. Because um, if the model was on them painted first, then when I was dry brushing it, it'd muck up the model. And similarly, if I um, painted the base first and then put the model on, all the washing um, and other colours would ruin the base. So I found this is a good compromise that now I'm only doing detail work. I can take these guys off, put them on these bases, touch up the feet just a little bit to make them kind of blend in a bit more, and then um, do the highlights whilst they're on their real bases. So uh, that's my next um, project. It is currently um, Saturday evening. Um, Emma's out for the night, so I've got a bit of hobby and time ahead of me. I'm going to get these guys on their bases, and then I'm going to start highlighting them. Um, I honestly don't know if um, you'll if uh, we'll have another bit of the hobby vlog, but hopefully um, there'll be another bit of the hobby vlog um, coming up after this. So I'm delighted to say that the uh, berserkers are now completely finished. Um, so. Here they be. Last time we saw them, they had just been um, base coated and shaded, and I've shown you their bases. They are now completely finished, and here they go. Da -da. Put some photos up of these on the um, GBHL Facebook group a while back. Very, very pleased with how these came out. All things considered, really, really pleased with them. Lovely, lovely models to paint. Uh, I put a lot of time into them, a lot of effort in, but I think um, I only had six to do, so it was worth it. Um, it's part of that kind of hobby burnout thing, or that risk that you get when you're um, thinking, oh, I've got 24 of these to do, or even 12 to do, but with only having um, only having six to do, it was, a, and because they're elites, it was uh, a little easier to justify the time. 
Um, so you saw them all being base coated and torched through that. Um, so what have we done um, since then? Well, the armour um, was finished off by, it had been shaded, it was edge highlighted in mithril silver, or ring fang steel, which is a new one, and then shaded again um, in the crevices with um, Agrax Earth Shade. Um, so exact, again, exactly the same um, for the armour as the armour I did uh, for my normal Gundabad, so if you want detailed tutorials on that you can go and um, check them out. Um, the uh, cloaks around the kind of fur around the shoulders, which I'm very happy with, um, was I was a bit dubious about it actually to be honest, but because um, I don't really like dry brushing on models, but I think these came out really well, and it was just a couple of light um, dry brushes of I think it was Gawthor brown followed by um, Bane Blade brown, which um, gave it a really nice kind of uh, finish to it. And I was really happy with that. Uh, the most exp the leather around the legs, these kind of these kind of loincloth bits were done again exactly the same as the Gundabads, which was um, re re base coat with um, Rhinox hide, then highlighted up with um, Gawthor brown and then Bane Blade brown. And I always think, oh, maybe I'll just leave it at the Gawthor brown, but um, it's the Bane Blade brown that makes it really really pop. Okay, so I'm not sure if it will or not, but I've just moved over to my um, paint station where I've got a daylight bulb and maybe the light will be a bit better on here. So yeah, um, I talked you through how I did the um, leather and you can hopefully now see potentially the um, Bane Blade Brown highlights around there. Um, all the buckles were all picked out, which took a bit of time, exactly the same way as the armour. Hopefully see in there. And on the boots, that's on him. That guy doesn't have any buckles, and then this guy has got these down here, and on that leg. Uh, the most, the biggest original colour that I hadn't done before potentially was the um, the leather, the armour. I painted the, as I said before, I painted the breastplates as this kind of uh, ready leather. I'd, um, you've seen me base coat it in Doomball Brown, and then wash it with Rhinox hide. I then re-highlighted it with Doomball Brown. And it was took and looking too light for me, so what I ended up doing was then mixing Doomball Brown with um, Rhinox Hide, and then painting that into the shadows to kind of darken it up a bit, and that looked really nice. And then I gave all of the armor another wash of Agrax Earth Shade, and that um, kind of dulled it all down a fair bit, which I think looked um, really nice. I was really, I was really happy with how that um, that red leather kind of turned out on them. And then the only thing left on them really was the um, was the skin, um, which I was keen to do these kind of albino guys. So if we can get another faces, so I'm quite happy with how these came out. The skin you'd seen was um, Rakarth flesh as a base and washed. And what I did, I highlighted with Rakarth flesh, and then into the crevices, I basically just um, worked because again I only had six. I didn't mind taking my time, and I worked between Gawthor brown, Rakarth flesh. And pallid witch flesh. And I started off by taking um, Gawthor um, brown and Rakarth flesh and working that basically into the crevices where you see into the shading, kind of putting that back on after that first highlight of Rakarth flesh. Then I mixed these two, um, Rakarth flesh and pallid witch flesh, and highlighted the very extremities of that. And you can see that particularly in the faces, but also just the strips, the kind of lighter white strips that are going down the various um, bits of flesh and then where, if I wasn't particularly happy with any of them in particular I would just kind of go between these colours like mixing up new shades and um, just dropping them in so they get lots and lots and lots of different little levels I tried to echo the um, the films by giving them, I did their eyes by starting off um, with a bright blue dot and then just putting a white dot over the top of that Pretty happy with how this guy's face turned out. There we go. And um, yeah, well, the other thing I did that I think um, I painted slightly differently and quite interestingly was that um, I was obviously batch painting all six of these, doing everything um, on all of them. And then once I got to the final few kind of flesh highlights, I actually just stopped and finished each one. So the flesh was the last thing I completely finished on them. Um, and I would just pick up one and just do all like do a, a highlight round and then a shading round and then a highlight round, almost kind of treating them like a hero until I was happy with that flesh. 
and then I would call him done. And um, I was really pleased with that because it meant that even though it probably took longer and I spent longer on them, I'm much happier with the result. And you could you could really work on kind of each one individually and really concentrate and make sure that you were happy with how each one of them was looking. And I figured that um, the benefit of this was because it was skin tone. It didn't then matter if they um, if it looked a bit different. Can you get more light over. Um, so if there's variations in the skin tone, it doesn't really matter. But hopefully this is coming out all right. You can see that I really, really like these guys and how the kind of skin all came together. So there we go. Um, six Gundamel Berserkers, which I was really, really happy with. They're absolutely gorgeous models. Massive kudos to um, Keith Robertson for the sculpts. Really, really like them. I used them in a couple of games over the weekend against Sam Page. Um, I managed to, with a 600 point Gundabad army, I took all six of them. I managed to win one game and lose one game, and I found these guys massively, massively underwhelming. <laughs> I still think they're a great profile, but um, their fight four didn't help me out. Um, it helped me out a bit against the dwarfs, I suppose. Uh, I played an army of dwarfs and an army of elves. It didn't help me out above fight three against the elves, obviously. And um, their defence 5 just made them very, very squishy. It didn't help at all that they were... I lost all of them in both games, so I took 12 wounds and I saved one with their 6 plus save. Um, so, you know, I wasn't particularly impressed with that, obviously. So I took 13 wounds and managed to roll 1-6. And they're, they're really cool and the 8-inch moves are very, very handy, but they were, just, they were just awful in my game. So I think they're really great. I think they're a great little profile, but the uh, defence 5 definitely, definitely makes them a bit squishy but hopefully um in games to come getting a getting one of these guys with a um Gundabad spear behind them. Um I've got a couple of axes on here as I think I talked to you through at the assembly stage saying I didn't want to use them I didn't want to assemble them for the game. I wanted a range of weapons. Obviously I never fainted with any of them because they all had ancient enemies. Um the axes would have been far more useful but I just think the um the swords look incredibly cool. And I wanted to make sure that I got those uh those models on the table as well. So really really cool models but as of yet um, fairly underperforming uh, for me in the game. The back of that guy. So there we go, I think I've hopefully given you a little uh, tour around these guys. And those are my six Gundabad Berserkers. Love, love the models, absolutely love them. Um, great sculpts, fun to paint, really enjoyed this little project. There's another six models for my um, Gundabad Azog's Legion um, army, which is really, really cool. So there we go. Um, that's the end of that hobby vlog, and I will be on to my next exciting project um, as, of, uh, as of next week. Obviously, we're now three weeks into January, and I've managed to complete seven models, so um, that's pretty good. Obviously, if I keep that right up, I will beat my, um, my target and do more than I did last week. Uh, last year, sorry, but I'm almost certain to not keep that up. So, there we go. I hope you enjoyed this um, fairly long hobby vlog. Until next time. Excuse me, I've a bit of a yawn. Until next time, don't forget to comment, like, share and subscribe. Support your Hobbit host by clicking in the links below. Um, follow us on Facebook and like us on Twitter. Support your Hobbit hobby and happy strategy battle gaming. <laughs>